I'm a practitioner of uh, design for motion pictures and television. I actually like to refer to it as narrative arts because I work in live performance as well as exhibition documentaries, television, film. I figure quite essentially whoever's hired me is responsible for the content uh, or the distribution of that content. I'm basically telling stories and visuals. Well, I've been in a rut all my life. I, I like doing what I do. What we use often said as designers is the, the dirty little secret that we can never tell producers is many of us, if we could afford to, would do it without being paid. I mean, there, there's something, there's a love uh, that comes out of what we do because it's part of it is um, intellectual and another part of it is very physical uh, and uh, where you really are working with your hands in your mind uh, to create um, a realization of what is just text on a page. A lot of what we do, certainly as uh, designers for uh, uh, narrative designers, is create a backstory that's not in the script. I mean, if you read the script of many things that I've worked on, you'll see visual details that are, there's no indication at all in the script. And that's what we're paid to do, is to be the curious ones to ask the questions of why. I, I think of it, or how, or uh, be, uh, et cetera. I, I think of ourselves as a lot uh, as um, cult, um, visual anthropologists or cultural anthropologists because we're, we're doing, uh, hopefully we get to do a range of things and in each case you're asking the same fundamental questions as why and how and you know what makes the story and the characters richer and what communicates the story better. In, in the States we don't get to do much in the way of historical dramas because they're very expensive to produce and we don't have the castles and the manor houses uh, there that you have here. Um, so that's much harder to do period production. I would say anything that's done uh, as a period piece, I, I would, uh, I'm a little bit more envious of. Um, but um, you know, you take, uh, you take the opportunities you get and, and go with them. The advantage that they've both had, and I, I, it's much to their credit, I actually, I envy it more than the work, is they've been able to have uh, work with the same directors on multiple pictures. And through that, you build a stronger, a more, um, uh, supportive working relationship, I mean, one would hope, uh, so that you're not having to prove yourself uh, as much as just prove, you know, can keep, keep uh, the challenge high in terms of doing good work. Um, that I envy more than the works themselves, the fact to have uh, uh, repetitive experiences with filmmakers that they, they genuinely like and respect. I don't actually know that many production designers that have had long-term success that could be that idiosyncratic. I think that's more of a perception than a reality. Um, you know, we, um, we, because we all work in show business, and that's business with a capital B. So we are all re ultimately held, you know, we can be great artists, but you're still held accountable for providing a service and in, in, a, in a certain time and in a certain budget. So you can't have a long-term career and survive in the industry if in fact you are, uh, uh, you have a reputation of being uh, a quote-unquote perfectionist or prima donna or anything else. We're, it's a collaborative art form. Uh, if you want to be a perfectionist, then you can go into studio arts and be a painter or a sculptor or whatever. If you want to go into film and television or, or narrative design, as I'll, I'll refer to it from this point, uh, then your responsibility is to to be a good communicator and be a good collaborator because it's, it's a group effort. Not being afraid to fail is really one of the key factors that separates good designers, I think, from poor designers, is being able to know, all right, I'm gonna make mistakes, so how am I gonna grow from them and how am I gonna turn those mistakes into, um, into successes? I try to, you know, again, I try to be a little bit more um, compassionate to others when I see their work just because I know uh, the challenges that they face to do it. You know, everyone who leaves college will probably practice easily seven different professions over the course of their, their productive lives. And uh, if you're working in the arts in particular, you really actually need to be cognizant of multiple things. You can no longer hope, if you're a writer, hope that someone's going to, to produce your work without you having to do anything to, to network and build a consciousness you can no longer take for granted that somebody else will come along with um, a great marketing plan. You really actually have to know how to market your work. So what we, essentially I've been trying to create a dialogue over the last few years with different institutions about how we can start rethinking how we train and educate people for future uh, professions. So they, you really need to focus on uh, not only creating a network with um, um, your um, classmates and people who have just gone before you and after you, 
but you need to really be thinking about the, uh, the entire um, spectrum of, of your um, pursuit. That is, if you're an actor, you really need to know how to write and certainly know how to uh, produce and you should know how to market and distribute. Um, and that's the same thing true with a director or a cinematographer or the designer. Uh, uh, the business side, you don't have to be an accountant, but you need to know the overall spectrum. It's almost, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a shallow expression, but so you have to start to collect these apps for yourself so that you can be more of a, a completely accountable for taking your aspiration and seeing it through to a reality. I think the days are really gone now where you, know, you can be a great writer and hope a studio will produce your film and then you'll get to share in the glory and the profits. Same thing is true with an actor, certainly the same thing is true with a director. Lot, what we have is on many levels, on a micro level and on a major level, we've lost community as we've gotten so global with our industries. Our industries, especially in entertainment, are all global and they're not going to be going back to being regional affairs anymore. So you really need to be not only current with technology and, and, and discerning about technology because not all technology is necessarily helpful, but discerning in terms of what technologies work best with what it is you're trying to do, and then being able to communicate and network with other uh, equally minded individuals that share your passion and aspirations. So it comes full circle back to as opposed to just going out there and doing it, going out there and doing it and creating a, a, an integrated network through technology of friends and, and associates that will help you make whatever your aspiration is successful and, and professional.